Introduction multidirectional instability MDI, of the shoulder was first described in 1980 as a complex condition of the shoulder defined by instability in two or more planes of motion. 1. The shoulder joint is unique in the way it provides a tremendous range of motion. In fact, it has the greatest mobility of any joint in the human body. However, mobility and stability are inversely proportional, and the complex interplay between the stabilizers of the shoulder works with little margin for error before instability occurs. Therefore the balance between the extraordinary physiologic range of motion and shoulder stability has proved to be delicate. The primary responsibility of the shoulder is to position the hand in space. Hence, some activities show preference toward mobility, swimming, while others favor stability, weightlifting, football linemen. Shoulder stability is maintained through both dynamic and static stabilizers. The dynamic structures responsible for joint stability include the rotator cuff muscles, the tendon of the long head of the biceps, and the periscapular musculature. The static stabilizers include the glenohumeral articular congruity, glenoid labrum complex, glenohumeral ligaments as well as the negative pressure created within the joint. Shoulder instability becomes symptomatic once the motion of the humeral head exceeds the boundaries set by the glenoid labrum complex. This is a result of pathology within the static and or dynamic stabilizers. Yap bakayım bu hareketi. Peki şöyle yapalım. Evet bir daha yap. Düzelt. Peki şunu yap. Bir daha buradan. Teşekkür ederim. Bir de şuradan yapalım. Because MDI is typically seen after disruption of the balance between dynamic and static stabilizers, the first line of treatment includes physical therapy with a focus toward the strengthening of the dynamic stabilizers of the shoulder. This includes strengthening of the rotator cuff and periscapular musculature. Closed kinetic chain exercises are used to retrain the muscles to co-contract for coordinated movements, which will enhance dynamic stability. It should be extensive and should continue for at least three to six months before more aggressive treatment is considered. This extensive therapy regimen has been shown to be successful because of the natural stiffening of the shoulder joint with age. It has been noted that symptoms of MDI decrease as skeletal maturity nears, therefore an extended therapy regimen is strongly advised. Open versus arthroscopic stabilization procedures are indicated only for those who have failed a long-term therapy regimen. Stabilization procedures include capsular shift, rotator interval closure, and plication of redundant capsular tissue. Capsular allograft reconstruction, although uncommon, has also been described for those with collagen disorders. All glenoid or labrum pathology should be addressed at the same time if they are found to contribute to the patient's instability.